All right, it is officially time to start. Um, Hi, yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you all so much for coming. So early in the morning on a Saturday, that is after a Friday, and we're gonna do some virtual reality video today. Um, so we are Ella VR. Uh, that is myself. I'm Vi Hart. This is Andrea Hawksley, Emily Eifler, and Elijah Butterfield. We are Ella VR. We are a virtual reality research group. Um, I guess what happened is a, a little over a year ago, uh, I kind of looked at what I was doing with YouTube, and it was so flat and rectangular and in this tiny confined space, and virtual reality was coming, and I just said, no, it's time to start doing some hardcore research and get this done right and get it done by creators and YouTubers instead of leaving it for people who don't really know how to create content or what content is to decide what virtual reality video is gonna be. It's us, it's all of us who are gonna decide what virtual reality video is gonna be. And we're gonna do it by starting to learn how to make it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if anyone's wondering why I haven't posted very much in the last couple of years, you can blame that. Um, so we are here, um, our research group is lucky enough to be supported by some very generous funding and stuff by SAP and Viewpoints Research Institute. And we are also happy today to have some special guests from Google Cardboard and Rico Theta. And together we're gonna be doing some fun stuff. We're gonna be creating some virtual reality video and just kind of going over what that is. So with that being said, um, let's start with Andrea Hawksley, um, who is going to tell us what spherical video is and stuff. And maybe I will pass this to you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Andrea Hawksley, and we're going to start off by just generally what spherical video is, because not everyone has seen it. So, actually, how many of you have seen spherical video? Yeah. I guess we self-selected for this conference hall. <laughs> But as you're probably aware, most video today is filmed on these awesome flat rectangles, like this. It's a rectangle. We just sort of took the world and we cropped it. And this is a historical relic. When people first started making video and film, they couldn't capture the whole world. So they settled for capturing part of it. And they captured this little rectangle. And we just kept this through like 100 years, even though now we really are capable of capturing the whole world. And the idea of video was to capture a moment in time and share it with someone else. So with spherical video lets us capture that whole thing and not just a tiny rectangular crop. And um, oh, you can yeah. see. Let's trade it. Here, can, I, can I steal your seat? <laughs> yeah, actually? that's a better Thank idea. You. Um, Oh, it's in Dvorak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I fixed it. It's no longer in Dvorak. This is the same video, and I'll start playing it. Uh, P is somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, over here. So you can see, but before we were looking at this tiny crop of the scene in that rectangle, which was basically just the three of us sitting there. And what you didn't know is that, like, we're kind of in a fern forest right now, if you look straight up. And if you turned around, you could see a little more of the scene. And in this video, actually, we're trying to relax. So in a moment, everyone is going to lie down, and you're supposed to lie down with them. So that's what the video looks like, or should look like, if we'd been capturing the whole scene, as opposed to just the little rectangular crop that you saw I don't know how do you do this earlier, like over here. And so now I'm going to talk about how can we view spherical video. Because one of the problems with spherical video is, well, even if you had it, if you go and just like load it into most of your usual video players, it's going to look like a weird distorted thing and you're not going to be able to look around. So right now, there's a lot of options. Probably the easiest option is a phone. How many people are carrying a smartphone around in their pockets right now? Yes. Well, mine's over there. But. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can load up a spherical video, and there's a few apps that will let you do it on your phone. And if you have a Google Cardboard, you can load it up on your phone, put it on your head, and look around. How many people have Google Cardboard? 
That's impressive. If you don't have a Google Cardboard, we are actually going to be giving away Google Cardboards at the end of this workshop. So, <laughs> so you will be able to view the videos that you create in VR, assuming you were one of the people who had one of these, um, after the talk. Um, there are also other phone headsets you can use that maybe have better lenses or are a little bit fancier than the $5 version. Um, like this is the wearality lenses, which we like because they have a huge field of view. Um, the other obvious way that you would view spherical video is on your computer, like we were just viewing earlier. Um, and you can, on your computer, you can use a VR headset. How many people here have actually used some kind of Oculus or VR headset? Wow. Fewer, but still a lot. Um, they are a little bit harder to get, both in price and availability, because it turns out that this is harder than cardboard boxes. <laughs> um, and now we're going to talk about spherical video players. And I could talk a long time about spherical video players. Like I wrote one, and I've tried like almost all of them. So if you want a slightly more detailed version, you can go to our website here. Um, LVR.com and then spherical video players. But to summarize, what we were just viewing the video in was the player I wrote, which was written over a year ago, like a year and a half or something, and was the first player that let you play spherical video on the web through your Oculus and look around, and it does mono and stereo. Um, the easy version that probably most of you will have already YouTubers and YouTube has kind of become the place where people post videos, is YouTube now supports spherical video. Um, and so you can load a video on YouTube, and if you go and load it and you see in the corner, there's these little arrows, you can look around it. You can load it on your phone and just look around in the phone app, which is pretty cool. And I believe they have officially announced that they will soon be releasing stereo, according to my news report this morning. So now I'm going to give it to Emily, who's going to talk a little bit about how you get the spherical video that you might want. Oh, buttons, okay. Hi, I'm Emily. So now that you know how to view a video, we're going to talk a little bit about how to edit them. Um, can you switch to the ISS video in the Theta app? Yeah. Um, so a lot of the editing techniques that you that you use on regular flat video that you're making right now can be applied to spherical video, but there's a couple of things that you have to keep in mind. Like we don't need to throw out the entire canon of film editing just to work in a sphere, but there are a lot of things that work here that don't work flat, and there's a lot of things that work flat that just don't work in VR. Um, so this is a, a little example video that um, <laughs> that I made basically yesterday. It's basically just a greeting card. It says, space, it is a place we can go from the ISS to Pluto. It's 10 seconds long, it's very simple. Um, so then can we go back to the, this is also on our YouTube channel if you wanna share it with all of your Pluto loving friends. Um, so this is a sphere and if you could push space please. Uh, this is how you unwrap a sphere into a flat plane so that you can edit, edit it in a flat video editor. So there's no, currently no way to actually edit a spherical video as a sphere. You have to unwrap it into what we call an rectangular format, which looks like this. Most people are really used to seeing this in maps. You know that this is a distorted image. You know that the Earth doesn't actually look like this. Um, but when you rewrap it onto a sphere, the equator stays basically the same and the top and bottom get shrunk way down. This is what that looks like in Premiere. Um, one thing, uh, the first thing you need to know about making this kind of video is that your sequence settings have to be two by one. It has to be twice as wide as it is tall or no spherical video player will be able to recognize it. Uh, you'll get things like the seams on the sides will have giant black lines where the video doesn't come all the way together. Um, so just keep that in mind, two by one. Um, Oh, I can't actually see my own things. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is titles. If you think about that rectangular projection, the farther you get away from the equator, the center line of the video, the more distorted it gets. And because you can't uh, distort titles in Premiere or even After Effects currently, um, to be perfectly within that uh, presentation, I would either recommend keeping them in the center line, using basic 3D, which is an effect in Premiere to l that lets you skew and like tilt and things, uh, your titles, 
Or the, the like actually effective way of doing this is to do it in Maya, to do like a 3D title, position it exactly where you would want in relationship to a camera, uh, and I, uh, sorry, render out just like one frame for that title. There's a whole work, uh, workflow of how to do that in Maya and how to use the Maya cameras and all that stuff on our blog that Elijah made over the summer. Uh, so it's very helpful if you want perfect titles. Um, so the, uh, so there's, you know, this video is flat, it's not in stereo, so to give it a little depth, you know, adding things like drop shadow to your things, but, um, where am I? Uh, okay, so the, the one thing that you really need for editing currently is an effect called offset in Premiere. Offset lets you seamlessly animate and reposition spherical video and that wraps from edge to edge. So if you think about using like the normal motion horizontal, um, animation values in Premiere. If you move something this way, it, you just get black on the other side. But if you use offset, that's not true. But one thing you need to know about offset is it needs to be applied at the very end after all of your other effects have been applied to a clip, and it needs to be applied to a nested sequence. So like you'll notice here that this is my ISS, which is just a PNG with a little drop shadow put on it, nested into its own sequence, and then um, I used offset to apply all of the animation. And you'll notice here that it wraps from side to side. But if you don't use a nested sequence, it'll wrap, but it'll wrap like way in from the edge of the video based on the size of the PNG. So just nest things. I know it's annoying, but it only works that way, so. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> ooh, I still have a voice. So offset was used to animate all of the moving images in here. Um, the, the new horizons, the clouds, the things, and it's all you know wrapping seamlessly through the back edge of the video. Uh, or I made a mistake right there in that cloud, I just noticed. <laughs> um, but so those really simple effects like that are, go a long way in spherical video, and there's a lot more editing techniques and um, writing. I've done a lot of writing on our blog about like scale changes and how you can effectively use scale instead of in flat video where you would do like a high or low angle for, a, for an effective power or a lots of other ways to use spherical video, but this is just sort of an introduction to how you might think about editing spherical video and the effects that you would need. So we are going to go on to the next section. Da, da, Your da, clickers, sir. Clickers. All right, so we've talked about what spherical video is and how to edit it, but we haven't covered how to record spherical video. By the way, my name is Elijah Butterfield. I am a computer science freshman at UC Berkeley. Go Bears. Normally, <laughs> normally I'm a tech instructor with a passion for building mobile games and mobile virtual applications, but today I'm going to talk to you about virtual reality cameras and the cool stuff that you can make that with them. So I'm curious, who has actually recorded spherical video before? Awesome. Okay. So, as you might know, if we look at this lovely slide here, virtual reality cameras, spherical cameras come in all shapes and sizes, from being difficult to use to easy to use to relatively inexpensive to being so expensive that you couldn't even dream of affording them. So, one of the most common ways that people create spherical videos is by using GoPro rigs. That's by taking heaps of GoPros, putting them in a special camera rig, using that to record spherical video. But from a creator standpoint, this usually isn't feasible because one, it's super expensive because a basic rig takes six GoPros and then a camera rig is like an extra $500 on top of that. And two, this is really difficult because you have to take the footage from all those cameras and stitch them into one video. This is a long and tedious process. So luckily for us, there are these wonderful uh, creator-friendly alternatives that are relatively inexpensive. And these are the cameras that we're going to be using today. Do I have any more slides? I'm sorry. Okay. So, one thing you have to keep in mind when recording spherical video is that just about everything you create with them is going to be fresh and new. You could take a spherical camera right now and go out and record your story and come out with a product of something that's like unlike anything the world has ever seen. So, to get an idea of the type of things that you can... Cr I'm sorry. I messed up on this. Okay. So... The camera that we're going to be using today is the Ricoh Theta. It's small, it's so you can put it in cool places to get awesome footage with it. Here's one right here. We're actually recording this in spherical video right now, so we can watch it later. It's not recording right now. It's not recording right now? No. Oh, that's stupid. We're recording right now. We'll record later then. Okay, so 
the Ricoh Theta. Theta? Ricoh Theta, yes. And when you, there's two cameras on both sides, right? Yes. It's two lenses? Two lenses on both sides. Yeah. Because you, when you did it, since there's no different colors, Okay, so to get an idea of the awesome stuff that you can create, we're going to take a look at some examples of the things that we've made. Transition music. Our transition hands. Yes, spherical camera. <laughs> um, Emily, want to mention some stuff about this This video. is a video called A Journey of Self-Discovery in which I just enjoyed the fact that the camera is so small you can put it like almost anywhere. Um, and there are several, um, part of the fun thing about this camera is like, this is a great shot for example, this is two spherical videos, whoa it's going really fast. Uh, <laughs> these are a bunch of different composite shots where like this is a mirrored image from the same camera twice or the one before that was a composite of a ceiling from one camera and a floor from, an, from another shot. Um, there's another example in here of like, I put you inside of, oh yeah, this is a, a display in the front window of the bakery near my house. And they always have these, these tiny little mechanical um, carnival things. And you, the, it, when you're watching it in a headset, you feel really small, but also it feels like you're in this little carnival. And I've just been playing a lot with scale and where you can put this camera, including inside of my own mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right, and because it's so easy to capture and and then stitch your video because the Theta comes with its own stitching software. It's really easy to experiment and try out a lot of things um, that maybe won't work. You're not investing a lot of money and time in trying to set up a shot using an expensive GoPro rig that's hard to, to stitch. Um, so for example, inside of a piano can work. Um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, CG stuff. Getting back to what Elijah actually does. Oh yeah, so this video here was, um, we did a test composite, so we 3D, sorry, we laser cut um, a model, and then um, it had a 3D version of it, then we rendered out a 3D version and composited that into a video, so you could take a look at how it would come out. So we rendered this in a spherical format, so we could overlay that onto the videos that we recorded with our Rico Thetas. Yeah, this is the rendered version that Elijah made, composited onto a video, um, and then the video version of it, just to like do a test. This is an actual wooden thing um, that was actually laser cut. So there's infinite things to try. Um, what else do we have on our list? Oh yes, this one is fun. Be big. Oh yeah, that's just a still image with uh, some 3D models composited into it. So we created a 3D version of our entire office space and then used that as a, a reference model so we could do special effects in our own office. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'd, I'd like to add that this still image I think was captured with the Ricoh Theta, but capturing still panoramas is something you can easily do with a smartphone. So if you wanted to create you can create video with the still panorama, either by compositing things on top, like green screening on top, or taking a whole bunch of panoramas and compositing them together. Or doing a stop motion animation, which works really well in 360. Especially a looping GIF type thing. Yeah. Um, which we have an example of somewhere, but I'm not gonna be able to find it without getting lost. Can you put the horses video on there? Yes, where is horses? Okay, and then one of the best things is that, um, as YouTubers, part of what I want is not high production value fanciness, but just to share and connect with my fellow human beings and see where they've been and what they've done. So for example, yesterday Andre went horseback riding and I want to know how that was and she took the spherical camera and instantly can have the spherical video and I haven't even seen this, but now I just get to see uh, where Andrea was and how was horseback riding. There's and you're actually on the horse. That is so awesome. Yeah, I'm on a horse. I don't know how this video turned out either because I literally just got it off the camera and haven't watched more than the first two seconds. Look at his little ears. Oh, I want to watch this in VR and I want to have <laughs> horse cam. You probably don't because once the horse starts moving, it's like bump, 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 and the camera falls off. So. <laughs> oh, look at the reins. That's awesome. That is so awesome. I love how that and, looks. Uh, case anyone here actually horseback rides, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so it probably shows really badly. <laughs> yeah, I like you can do a smile. You're like, yeah, horses. And, and, uh, 
Grippy the camera tripod. right now is attached with a grippy tripod oh, to like a little the, the saddle thing, and it doesn't. The grippy tripod did not succeed very well, and it falls off. So you're actually looking straight down, you look straight up, and then do a 360. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is just yep. <laughs> yeah, and then and then I'm like, oh, I better catch this, and then we stop, and I give it to my aunt. It's her horse. Yeah, so this is taken with the Theta, stitched with the Theta software, and playing in the Theta software. Um, and it's really quite easy, especially compared to the GoPro rigs. But that will get easier too, and people will start creating more cameras. But right now, there's not much on the market for stuff like that. Um, wait, before we do too many questions, I'm going to do a time check, because we might want to leave minutes. questions for the end. Okay, yeah, we can do a couple questions. Um, can I just say really quick, grippy tripods and selfie sticks are like the best hardware for making spherical video. I know that people think selfie sticks are really embarrassing, but once you take the screen off of the camera and no one is staring at a screen, selfie sticks suddenly become like invisible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the software really kind of stitches around the camera. Um, how do you deal with, like in this example, Great question. So yeah. one, the, one is hardware, is that little cameras, uh, the, the Pix Pro does not have this, but the Theta has a thing where if you turn it slowly enough, it orients itself to gravity. Uh, this is not always perfect. We found, especially when Elijah was doing yep. tests with a, like an exact copy of our office in Maya, that like the thing would be off by like a little bit. Like, so the way you would fix that would be to in a little while, there will be plugins for Premiere and After Effects to be able to let you re-distort the panorama. Um, the only, currently the only way to do that is to start without a necro rectangular video, put it into something like color, then re-distort the panorama. Unfortunately, you can't do that with a camera that stitches its own stuff, so you are just out of luck. <laughs> You just said that, so right now you won't be able to take that and stitch or unstitch it because that, this, that image is taken with that camera that doesn't have the technology to let you unstitch. You, when you get the footage out of this camera, it looks like two circular lenses, but it, because it's proprietary, like only the Ricoh Theta software can really stitch this camera. Mm -hmm. um, but you get a, the finished stitch video is not proprietary. Um, yeah, this is just a regular MP4 in regular equirectangular format. And regular equirectangular format, that's what this looks like. To be fair, MP4 is, is still patented. All right, oh, yes, true. that's true. MP4 <laughs> has problems. Um, but you could turn this into whatever you want. It's just equirectangular, and right now it's standard for that things are in equirectangular. We're just in the, like, we're in a transition phase between, like, there being no editing software and there being, like, a few tools that don't work great. Um, so yeah, we're just transitioning. Mm -hmm. In the green? Why, yes, it does. Um, and for that, we have a tutorial on elevr.com, E-L-E-V-R.com. We have lots of things, including a tutorial on how to do the complete workflow for the Rico Theta. Um, for uploading to YouTube, in order to make it be in spherical, right now it's kind of a clumsy process where you need to use a separate app to like inject metadata. Um, it's all on the web, it's all documented, it's all on our website. Um, all right, we should actually just play with the Rico Theta before yeah. we get yeah. more questions, because you will have more questions. Yeah. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do right now is we are going to actually film with some cameras. And thank you, Rico Theta and Rico people who are maybe in this room for letting, letting, lending us a whole pile of cameras, and now you are all going to learn how to use these cameras. Please don't start recording yet. Um, because if we get too much footage when we try and get it off the cameras, it's going to be a mess. Um, but take a look at your camera. We're going to be in groups of whatever row you're in. So each row on this side will be a group. Each row on that side will be a group. And um, so, you know, say hello to each other. So here's what's going to happen. Each group and not too much noise yet, please, because I need to explain what's going on. Um, each group, and we'll have a moment, I'll give you a moment to start meeting each other. Each group is going to make a video together. First, you're going to brainstorm what your video is going to be. 
Um, then we're going to talk about what that might be. And um, here are some ideas. Um, oh, yes, we have a schedule right there. Go big. OK. We're going to brainstorm together. Then we're going to talk about that. Then you're going to kind of run through your video. And please don't start recording yet, as I just said. You're going you're gonna to change the amount of footage on each camera, and it's going to be harder for us to deal with later. Um, you're going to get your camera. You're going to brainstorm about what you want to do. You're going to kind of run through the thing you want to do. Um, and then you're going to actually shoot your footage. And then we are going to collect all the cameras back and take the footage and upload it to YouTube. And every single one of you in your group, you're going to record something and it's going to end up on YouTube. So be aware that whatever you record here, we're going to put on the internet. And so try something out. And then you can download back all of your footage. And you can play with editing it. You can see how it looks in a rectangular format. You can see how it looks in spherical. Generally, experiment something. And whatever you do will be basically the first time it's ever been done. There's not a lot of 360 video out there. There's not a lot of spherical footage on YouTube. So doing something extremely simple is great. One of the best things I ever did was I put a camera into an envelope. And I turned it on. And then I put some paper into the envelope. Very simple, and it ended up being super awesome. So anything you do is going to be amazing. Um, so we're going to start with, in your group, you have five minutes to talk about what you want to do together. And then after that, I'll, I'll hear back from some people and do like a sanity check if anyone is like, I want to throw the camera into a wall. Um, <laughs> like, don't do that. So what we're going to do is, in the end, we'll be recording for three minutes. The limit to your video is three minutes. So just come up with something in three minutes that you want to do. OK. Before we start, is everyone clear what their group is? Is there anyone here who is like, who am I working with? What's going on? All right. OK. Yeah. All right, you have five minutes. Yeah, we're not gonna use I can't I can't hear you. And A, you can ask questions to anyone on our team. You can ask Google Jump people questions. And you can also ask Kodak, identify yourself by way if you are, have questions about the Pix Pro. Any questions about anything? Yes? Are these files huge? Um, the files can be very huge. For the theta, they're not too huge because the resolution is not like as big as something like 16 GoPros. A file from this would be monstrously huge. Oh. And dealing with those files is part of the challenge of doing spherical video. And yeah, right next. Is live streaming a future yeah, there are cameras that live stream right now, um, or at least dev kits for some, such as the Gyroptic. Yeah, Gyroptic cam. 360 cam is supposed to be able to live stream. Uh, currently, I no. don't think YouTube. Nothing for live streams. Channels. Okay. Yeah. No official announcements from YouTube regarding live stream. Yes. Have you uh, tried one of these on a drone at all? Yes. <laughs> Yesterday. 
And if you're interested, I can show you a video that we shot. Uh, yesterday we were flying some drones around, not with all 16. That would be a very big drone, although one of the big octocopters could do it. But we uh, flew around a rig that has two GoPros with some modified fisheye lenses. Uh, we flew it around yesterday. And uh, yeah, come up later. I'll yeah, upstairs we'll have turned the floor into yeah. a VR floor. Upstairs. Yes. Most people will attach a microphone such as this one. Is there anything like ambisonic in there or is that yeah, regular? So this is a Zoom um, off the shelf H2N spatial audio microphone, which records um, along the horizontal plane. So you don't have ambisonics in terms of all, all directions along the horizontal plane, you can spatialize. Yeah, um, people so use a bunch of, like whatever your camera is, you can, as far as I know, there is no product. Oh wait, there is one product, the Visisonics camera is a mono camera that also does spatial audio um, that is for live streaming, although it's quite an expensive, big fancy cam, that's Visisonics. As we start seeing more cameras come on the market, we'll start seeing better audio. Right now, audio is very much neglected. But in theory, audio should be a huge cue for where you're supposed to be looking and all sorts of editing stuff. Yes? Yeah, oh, right now we just need an actual circle editing format. So anything you do is kind of like flattened and squished and it is a problem. Um, Emily, do you have any particular advice? I mean, we've talked a bit about like, um, you know, like NASA has all of these like spherical um, data methods that they use, but none of them are really applied to video yet. So you are stuck with H.264 until someone decides that they want to release the product that they're working on. And MP4 is what YouTube supports currently. Yeah. Like you need to mm -hmm. upload an H.264 MP4, right? So yes. Uh, as well as Metro Sky. Oh, Sky I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> OK, in the red? Um, if you're going to be compositing stuff, then as Emily showed with the titles, there can be like weird warpiness. Um, the YouTube, like anything that's going to be compressing after you're done editing can kind of mess up stuff at the lines or at the poles. So we recommend very high resolution export so that uh, compression artifacts don't uh, mess up the seams. There is, I wanted to mention earlier, there is a, an After Effects plugin called Metal, M-E-T-T-L-E Skybox. And this is a plugin that will um, allow you to create an array of six cameras to create a cube, which then allows you to place graphics and then it wraps into a sphere so that you don't get that distortion that you were talking So then you can place 3D graphics around the sphere and you don't have to just stick to the equator. Do you have any these? Skybox. Uh, it's from a company called Metal, M-E-T-T-L-E. I have a question on that. Oh, and also uh, on our team here, Andy Stack has a confession to make. <laughs> Hi, my name's Andy Stack. I'm with YouTube, and I, I, I have five of those cameras. Uh, I forgot to mention to you. I've, 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 can go oh. we, can, we can bring some sunshine back into the room. Well, we uh, still got robbed. Five, yeah, five of those and cameras I've given security. to security. <laughs> <laughs> so I had top creators uh, currently are in possession of, of five of them. Um, and I talked with uh, TK, in, uh, who's the product manager for the, the Rico Theta, and he says we're, we're totally great with continuing to give away the Thetas on the table. Yay! So, thank you, TK. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> I have a question for you. You just said that, that so you have six cameras. If we have one of those, how do we unstitch? Or no, the, the Skybox plugin you, in After Effects, you would create six virtual cameras. The plugin does it for you. And then it stitches, it creates a cube, but inside that cube you can place graphics and then there's another process. It's all in the plugin. It's, it's actually easier to use than what you're hearing me say right now. And that's the way you can place titles and graphics around the sphere without uh, having them warp and distort. And that would be a way to take care of any warping and distorting. You can put some kind of image or something above that so now it takes away so when you go across, instead of seeing that seam or line, you might have uh, a turkey, you know, yeah. something. The thing I've used it for, other than sometimes creating fun graphics, but um, there's a thing where sometimes you'll want to stick a little intro at the beginning of your 360 video. So a lot of times the, the intro is, hey, this is a 360 video on YouTube, check it out. And, and what will happen is if you just slot that image over top of your big hyper rectangular, 
it will have these distortion lines as it seems to be pushed away into space. You'll get these big concave, yeah, concave lines. And what you actually need is for that to get pre-warped in the Skybox. I don't want to go on too long about it, but the Skybox plugin helps you place graphics into uh, a spherical video without them appearing distorted when you finally view it. Yeah, I think we have time for one more question. Um, so I would say the theater is just under three minutes. Are the limits on any of the other cameras? Right now, every camera has its limits. Um, the spherical cameras, it's all very new. And if you have a theta, get the firmware update so you can so you can record for five minutes. The, um, the 360 goes 30 minutes intervals, so as soon as the first 30 minutes are up, it'll automatically start going another 30 minutes. And the GoPro has a similar limitation. They have like a segmented thing. The only problem with GoPro is that the likelihood of losing the successive segments without stopping and restarting the camera gets higher the longer you go. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is actually. What is your website? Why? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Our website is elevr.com, E-L-E-V-R.com. Um, we have tutorials on so much of this. We have tips on editing. We have tutorials on Maya stuff and uh, editing techniques and the actual mechanics of spherically stuff. Um, How to get this on YouTube. Yes, all, all of that. You should go to elevr.com. Um, and we'll have the videos up there and all the other stuff. So right now what's going to happen, because we are out of time, is we would love to continue to the, the discussion, to maybe film some more, to show some demos, some jump demos by the Google team. Um, so what we're going to do, because we have to clear the room, is we're going to move upstairs in one moment. First, everyone look under your chairs um, and see if there's something taped to the bottom of your chair. I was going to jump in Oh, yes. Oh, no. Now we're going to have a big chair thing. Anyone who has something taped to your chair, come up, come here. up here. Get your camera. And the rest of you, we hope to see you upstairs. We're going to be taking over the third floor and turning it into VR floor. Thank you so much for coming. Get a cardboard on the way out. Oh, yeah, discount code. There is a discount code for... Um, what is the discount code? I forgot it. There is a Rico Theta discount code if you want to get a discount on a Theta camera. I think the discount code is VidCon. We will tweet about it. We will tweet about it. Um, is TK still here? Where is TK? Yeah, he's in the back. Is TK in the back? Um, cannot see. Cannot find the other. Um, 